This is a presentation for the Maine Arts Assessment Initiative. My name is Shannon Westfall and I teach art, visual arts at the elementary and middle school in Deer Isle Stonington. I have about 220 students and I see them once a week for 45 minute sessions. What we are talking about a lot at our school are essential standards and proficiency based learning. So right now we're working on creating essential standards for all the content areas, which will then allow us to start a proficiency-based learning model in the, in the future. And we don't know when that future is going to be for us, but um, we're creating the essential standards, so when it does happen, we're ready. So if you look at this graphic, which is a graphic I got from the League of Innovative Schools website, you can see how the standards are broken down. Um, and I'll refer to them as essential standards. So at the top you see you can see graduation standards. Those would be cross-curricular skills, which would be talked about in every content area. And these are big lofty ideas such as creative problem solving, communication, um, things like that. And then directly underneath that are what I'll be referring to as essential standards. And they're called graduation standards on this graphic. Um, essential standards and then below that again would be performance indicators. So we have been creating essential standards for our K-12 visual arts curriculum and we've been creating performance indicators which would be um, five around five indicators per each essential standard to kind of map out what it looks like and what that standard means. So that's what we've been working on um, most of this school year. So these are actually our essential standards that we have come up with. They don't have the standard indicator indicators with them, and you probably can't see them from this video, but I will show you where you can find them. I'll put a link to them on my website, and I'll give you that website information at the end of this video. So our essential standards are broken into categories such as disciplinary fundamentals, creative process, critical response, and collaboration. And those categories have about three standards in each of the categories and then each standard has its own set of indicators. So we created indicators for K2 and then there are separate indicators for 3-5 and separate indicators for middle school and then separate indicators for high school even though the standard is labeled the same. It will just look different to reach that standard in all of those different grade bands. Um, it's really been great for us to be able to work with these standards because the more you work with the standards, the better understanding you have of the standards and the better able you are to help your students reach those standards. These all align with the main learning results and there's, um, a, there's a graphic of that alignment in the notebook that I'll link to at the end of this page um, so that you can see where they fit. So basically we've created these essential standards and these are becoming our, our mission in our K-12 classroom. Um, also these standards have helped us align our curriculum. Um, the high school art teacher and me being the middle school and elementary art teacher, now our curriculum is better aligned instead of ha um, Katie having her curriculum and me having my curriculum. There's more of an alignment now that we've created these standards. We're both on the same page, literally. So once you see the standards and or the essential standards and the indicators, this will make a little bit more sense to you. But one major thing that I'm doing different this year is I'm assessing specifically the indicators instead of assessing every individual lesson. So not right now, but in the future, every indicator that we have will have its own rubric. And I will mostly be using these rubrics for the indicators instead of using rubrics specifically for lesson plans. So this rubric is specifically measuring the B3 standard for grades three through five, and that standard is students develop strategies that lead to innovation and increase their, conf and increase their confidence to generate unique ideas. So we did um, a lesson in the fifth grade where students had to take a square piece of paper, a perfect square, and rip it up, cut it up, fold it up, whatever they wanted to do to create something different, create an interesting composition. Um, and I really am pushing them to 
not just use the first idea that they come up with, but learning how if you come up with a variety of solutions, you can then look at all of those solutions and judge the best answer to that question. So they're trying to push the envelope and come up with creative ideas. Um, and this rubric is measuring their ability, their ability to do that. So I would actually, in my class, I would show them this rubric before they even started the project so they knew exactly what I was looking for um, and exactly how they would get the exceeds or how they would get the meets. Um, if a student is partially meeting the standard, I actually make them go back and fix it, do it again, whatever they need to do to move up to that meets. And they have gotten more used to that now. So they're always working to to push um, to push their project up to the meets or up to the exceeds because I know I'm going to make them go back and do it again if they don't. Um, I really think that this process of just assessing the indicators is going to make everybody's life easier. It's going to streamline my curriculum, not in a way that takes away from the arts, but in a way for students to have a more clear picture of what specifically I'm looking for. And I'm really a huge advocate for getting kids in on the assessments. Um, I don't think I have to really spend too much time talking about this, but there are so many benefits for getting kids in on the assessments. And it's not the easiest thing to do at first, but once you make that a habit in your classroom, the kids expect it and they know it's going to happen and they stop moaning and groaning about it when you hand out the rubrics and they know exactly what you want them to do. They're able to do it. You have a quick conversation at the beginning of class. Once that habit is developed, they're able to assess themselves on all of their own projects. They can see the rubric, see what you're looking for, see what they need to do to meet the standard that that project is trying to, trying to reach. Um, and just making kids assess their own artwork really gets them to think about their artwork in a different way. It promotes higher order thinking skills, uh, promotes 21st century skills, and really moves kids up on the Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid. So, and I really don't think that this is just making them better artists to assess their own work. I really think that it's starting to get them to think about things in different ways and question and I really think that it makes them better citizens in the long run. So it gets them more ready to graduate school and be responsible citizens. So this is a really quick version of what my workshop is about. But the all of the information that I talked about and a ton more information, I have actually put in an Evernote notebook, which you can find at dises.org. That's um, our school's website. And then if you just click on the art page, you can go down to teacher and parent tools, I think it's called, and um, click on the Evernote notebook. And all of the essential standards, all of the indicators, all of the rubrics that I've created so far are on there. And I will keep posting rubrics as I create them. So it'll always be being updated. Um, also, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email is swestfall. W-E-S-T-P-H-A-L at D-I-S schools.org. Thank you so much.